भावशिष्य दे ओम शांति 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 ओम सहना सहनाओ गुण सहवीरियमे तेजस्वीनावतीतमस्तु मिपिशाबे ओ शाते 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 In the beginning was the word The word was with God and the word was God And the word will make you God Before we begin on meditation, I would like to briefly tell you and explain to you through a Zen statement as to what you should do. There is a very famous Zen statement which says, in Pali language, "Eka chitta ekshana samyukta pragya." Eka chitta, one point, state of mind. Eka chitta. Ekshan, see, see. So one point of focus, see in, associated with some yukta, prajna, with all your awareness. So see in. There are three important words here. Ekachit, focused state of mind. Ekachit, it's totally focused. And what does this mind do? Seeing, seeing is taking place. Seeing what? There's nothing to see, but seeing is but seeing is there. You don't. See, there's nothing to see anything in particular. But the state of acute, intense seeing is there. Seeing is there. Just see. Associated with prajna, with all your awareness, you are seeing. In meditation, first of all, naturally you close your eyes, so the outside scene is no more there through the sense organs. It is no. More. Then internally. When your mind is totally calm and quiet, there are no thought patterns, no mental images at this point. You don't entertain any thoughts, no perceive have any mental images of any order. So there is nothing there for you to see. There is nothing. But seeing is there. Seeing is there. 
and in that sea so you have become absent to the world the outside world sensory world and also you have become absent to your mental world your mind world too is not there because no images no thoughts are floating in that's why we use the word focused one pointed focused attentiveness is there and only seeing is there seeing what nothing there's nothing when you close your eyes there's nothing hmm? but see is there of course when you go to sleep or when you want to sleep you not only go to close your eyes but at the same time you wish to for, forget you wish, wish to <clears throat> be what you wish to be unaware of everything unaware but here you are totally aware totally aware with all your alertness that is why we use the some you the prajna with all your awareness you are seeing there attentive so this is what has to be done there as to why you should do this i explain that when we come to what is meditation what is meditation and why you have to get do this so a question one point focused awareness one more focused awareness so let us all form to begin with half an hour be in this state let's be thing that has to be done the most important activity of your life because in meditation proper you are getting in tune with your true self which is your divine self really speaking in this state statement man was made in the image of god but where where was this image of man made by god where you're going to arrive at that place and then sustain it so when you are in a state of focused attention you are sustaining that that is all that you have to do 
of goals. All of you know that you know that in social life people often say this statement. May God be with you. Have you heard it? Everyone says it. <coughs> it's a benediction. But the reverse is even worse. God is always with you. There's no doubt about that. He's always there with you. But the point is, you should be with God. That's where the catch is. Are you with God? This is where you are with God. So God is there with you. But then, are you with God? Hmm? This is where it is. <clears throat> See the whole secret. <clears throat> the most important truths are just one line statements which will reveal the whole truth. Now, in order to understand and appreciate what it is all about, the first thing that everyone should understand is <clears throat> try to understand the meaning of the word God. What does this word G O D mean? The word divine, what does it mean? What does it signify? This has to be understood. So of course, you know that God is with you. Hmm? God is with you. The divine is within you. Hmm? So if the divine is within you, he is with you all the time. And you are one with it. You are it itself because he is there. You are it itself. So, I and my father are one. God and I are one. We are not two, we are one. Present here within, we are one. This understanding is the beginning of religion, true religion, and also the beginning of meditation. This understanding. So for you to appreciate this fact or this truth, you have to understand first of all, what is God? What is God? That has to be understood. Of course people, if you ask them what, what God is, they will say so many things. They will say so many things. Yes, some of them may be okay, some not. But what is it? What is it? First thing you have to understand is God is not an entity. God is not a being. He's not a being. <clears throat> Like all beings in the whole universe, everything in the whole universe is a being. Even angels are a being. Demigods and gods are all beings. Even what is projected as gods by the Hindus, as the Hindu gods, like Brahma, Vishnu, etc., they are also beings. Anything which has a form, a material substance, to be encased with is a being. But God is not a being. God is something which exists without a form. It has, it is bodiless. It exists but it has no body. No 
pot, neither a gross body nor a subtle body. Angels have a subtle body. Demigods also have subtle bodies. Anything material which is as a subtle body. But God is something which has absolutely none of these. None of these. No bodily form. But it has one thing. It exists without a body, but has consciousness. Has consciousness. God has consciousness. Not the type of consciousness that you and I have. This consciousness is a consciousness wherein I and you is there. Duality is present. Duality is present. I am the universe. Duality is present. Even I am present. And you are present. And the universe is present. Duality. This is called the consciousness of this human consciousness functions on a duality basis. But the consciousness which God has, He must have consciousness. You know why? Tell me why. That he must have consciousness. <coughs> it's neither a he nor a she, but for want of better language, I use the word he. And we can't use the word it. Why is it that we can't use the word it? Tell me. Respect. Huh? Yes, Respect. that is one factor. Yes, it cannot be used. That's one factor. Any other reason why? Nobody knows what it is. What huh? it is it? Nobody knows what it is. Exactly. So it cannot be expressed or known. And at the same time, the word it is not used because it is used for the material, for an inert substance. Hmm? For an inert substance, you use the word often it. Hmm? You don't use to say the world is she or he. Hmm? So the world it is. So it has no gender there. God has no gender. And neither the word it can be used because it's an inert substance. And since it has therefore consciousness is there. Consciousness is there. And and the scriptures very emphatically declare us the consciousness of God. But what type of consciousness? What type of consciousness? This consciousness of God is non-dual in character. Non-dual. Hmm? So non-dual means neither I nor you are there. Neither I nor the world universe is there. When I come, when I the individual comes, transpires, you also appear in front of me. And the universe too is there. This is reality. So I and you, this state of affairs, which is the human consciousness, this is not there. So it is non-dual. Non-dual. And this non-dual consciousness is something which is, uh, for the human mind, mind-boggling, isn't it? It cannot fathom how a consciousness can be non-dual. Hmm? You can't comprehend why it is non-dual. Why? <coughs> now, So, in order to arrive at this non-dual non state, it says non-dual state of existence, non-duality, 
non-dual state of existence and consciousness. So in order to arrive at this, you also should make your mind correspondingly non-dual in nature. Non-dual. So when you are getting into this state of silence, silence, wherein there is nothing there, where there is nothing there, and in this silent state, as you close your eyes, and gradually, in this, we use the word awareness there, awareness. This awareness is almost getting on to a non-dual awareness. Almost. Not totally, because you are still <coughs> apparently conscious of yourself, isn't it? You are still conscious, there is still some consciousness of yourself there. Hmm? So it's not totally non dual but you are arriving close to it. Arriving close to it. So this, as you keep on sustaining this non dual state of awareness, as you keep on maintaining this, then what happens is you begin to lose self consciousness. Self consciousness. And at the same time, you will also begin to become oblivious of the surroundings. Then at that time, the outside factors don't impinge on you. Like heat and cold, you will not feel. Because you have now got transported to another level wherein you have become oblivious to yourself and to the world around. And you are totally absorbed in this thing. It's totally absorbed you in this state. And as you, this absorption is self-absorption. And you may call it a mystic state. The, the beginning of a mystical state. Beginning of a mystical state. you will get become more and more absorbed in this state. So gradually, as you keep on getting into regular practices of meditation every day, this becomes more and more intense, more and more intense. You gain a certain amount of depth in it. And now you are getting into, shall we use the word samadhi? Some of you may have heard of the word Samadhi hmm? or a mystical state of absorption. You are getting into that state. So, as you get more and more into it, into the fluid state of Samadhi or mystical absorption, then finally, like a flash of lightning, like a flash of lightning, enlightenment transpires. And the experience takes place that I am that. I am that. Because the meaning of the word God is I am that I am. This experience transpires. Then you can enlighten to your true being. So therefore, initially, one has to understand what the divine is, what the divine is. That's the first step in meditation. There are two aspects as far as meditation is concerned. One is meditation proper. 
The other is meditative exercises. Meditative exercises. In meditative exercises, the mind is in operation. The mind is active and is in operation. While in meditation proper, you are entering into a state of no mind. Where in the thinking process stops, the no mind. You know the word no mind with a little n and little f, no mind. And this no mind state will lead you to the no mind with a capital N and capital N. Will lead you to that. And that is Nirvana, Nibbana. That is enlightenment. It will lead to that. So, you have to understand the difference between meditation proper and meditative exercises. Because there are many brands of meditative exercises which are taking place, which are also called as meditation. Which are also called as meditation, but then it's not meditation. They are just exercises to tone up the mind. Toning up the mind, it's, they are just all exercises. So, the divine is that which is formless, non-material, not a substance, not anything that you know, not anything that you feel. <clears throat> so it has become what? Since it is not anything that you know, it is something which is unknown to you. Isn't it? You are trying to meditate on something which is unknown to you. It's totally unknown. It has no characteristics. It's neither red, nor green, nor white, nor big, nor small. Hmm? No anything. No what? It is not anything that you know. Then you may turn around and ask the question, if it is not anything that I know, what is it then? Have you got the answer? I give you the answer. I said, then what is it then? And what did you do when I said, what is it then? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <coughs> exactly. You were in a suspended state, wasn't it? <laughs> were you not? That is what it is. I am told in the upper state in New York there is supposed to be some sort of a Zen monastery, Zen hermitage. They seem to have a big compound. And if anyone wants to go there, you know, learn something, <coughs> they go there and make an appointment and go there. And uh, as they enter the premises, the monk there comes there with a little stick in his hand. And then he asks him, but why have you come? What brings you here? So he would say that, well, I want to learn. Oh. And promptly he takes the stick and gives him a blow. <laughs> he gives him a blow. 
The newcomer is so shocked. So shocked. I came here to learn something, but he gave me a blow. And then he began, the newcomer, the person who wanted to know, naturally begins to protest and ask something. Why did you do this or what? Said, you talk, you get another one. You, are, you talk anything, you get another one, another blow. The whole idea is, when you receive that blow, you were going to be shocked into silence. Momentarily, you got shocked into silence. The whole idea was to make you get shocked into, to shock you into silence. It would have done the job if you are remained in that silence state. <laughs> but unfortunately, your arrogant mind wants to find out why you got the blue. <laughs> <laughs> then you deserve another one. Don't you? And then out of impatience he asked him, what is God? No reply. So now he becomes impatient. What is this? I am asking my teacher and he is not telling me. So the third time out of impatience he is asking him, what is God? And then he tells him, I am revealing to you, but you don't understand. See, I am revealing to you. It is not available for verbal description. Huh? Not available. So you can't conceive what it is in your mind. It's one thing you can't conceive. So if you can't conceive, what should you do? What should you do? Come on. Uh -huh. huh? Since if you cannot conceive it mentally, right? Then keep quiet. So, the way to know the unknown is to 
is to what? Keep quiet. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> yes. What happens when you uh, when you when you have closed your eyes? What happens when you close your eyes? Tell me. There's nothing. Huh? There's nothing. Of course, there is nothing. But you have entered into a peculiar state, isn't it? <clears throat> huh? You have entered into a peculiar state. And in that state, could you just tell me what that state is? Samadhi. No, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> not yet. Stillness. Huh? Stillness. Stillness. Stop. Stillness. Stillness. Of course, stillness is there. In that stillness, mm -hmm. have you not got into a meditation? into an unknowing state? Isn't it? In that stillness, are you not in an unknowing state? Because you know nothing there. Got it? You know nothing there. Because there is nothing there. Even though there is something there, which you don't see. But to arrive at that something which is there, first of all, you have to get into it. Unknowing state. Now, what it? So, when you close your eyes and you are told you are in that unknowing state, you are in that unknowing state, you know nothing there. But even though you know nothing there, and is it your awareness there? Your awareness is very much there hmm? in seeing, in seeing that nothingness, isn't it? Hmm? Right? And there it lieth your salvation. There it. Because that is an unknowing state, unknowing state wherein you don't know anything there. You don't know. You don't know yourself. You don't know the world, hmm? neither do you know the demand, therefore it's an unknowing state. Huh? So there is nothing, there is only darkness. Isn't it? Hmm? In that darkness, but uh, in sleep also there is, all, there is darkness, but you are unconscious. See the difference? Here, also there is darkness, but here there is, you are conscious of it. You are aware of it. You are totally aware in that darkness. In that darkness. And in that darkness you are seeing, even though your eyes are closed, isn't I are you not seeing them? Huh? Seeing nothing there. Hmm? It is like entering a tunnel, a dark tunnel. You enter the tunnel, go a little distance inside. Then you see there is, all, there is nothing there. It's all darkness. The light from either end of the tunnel has been covered now. You see nothing. Hmm? But you are there. Are you not? You are there still. See. See in the darkness. Hmm? Then haven't you heard that famous statement, which is very loosely used? The light at the end of the tunnel. The light at the end of the tunnel. That's the whole secret. As you keep on seeing there in this inner, inner tunnel, that is why in the Hridaya Gubaya, that divine is there lodged in the Hridaya Guha. Guha is K. K. Huh? K where? In the heart, in your heart. Not the physical heart, but your spiritual heart center. That's why when you say I, what do you do? You put it here, isn't it? You don't put it here. Huh? You don't say put it here, automatically you put it here, why? Hmm? 
So your heart center is there, which is your center of your own existence. Not the physical heart, but your center of your own existence, it is there. And the expression used is Hridaya Guha, the K. The K in the heart is an expression only used. The word cave has been used because when you enter these caves, you see nothing. In the olden days, they didn't have tunnels. Tunnels are bad made. Caves are God made. Isn't it? They are naturally there. Naturally there. So therefore, you end in that unknowing state. Unknowing state. You enter there. And gradually travels there. So, travels means be intensely focused there, deeply focused there. <coughs> so, now one thing is very clear that, that the divine is an inconceivable something. Hmm? In, because it has, you can't conceive it in any way as to what it is. So the only way to think of it, the only way to think of it is, tell me, give me, finish the sentence. The only way to think of it is, come on. Ah, uh, yes, of course I'm going. The only way to think of the divine within is not to think. It's not a thing. By not thinking, you are thinking of it. That's the irony of the whole thing. Now, haven't you heard these funny things which are being circulated? Not to think, in order to learn not to think. Have you to be initiated into that? Can you be initiated? <laughs> so what is all these initiations being initiated into meditation and all that? What is that going on in the world? Huh? What is business opportunity? Ah, <laughs> there you see. There you see. That's the real reason why the initiations are taking place in the world. Now you see. So if you really understand what meditation is. You don't, you will know what it is. That you have no need to be initiated. And they initiate you with mantras also. Isn't it? <laughs> and these mantras, what are they? You are mumbling something. <clears throat> huh? Here, you are going to stop all of them. You are going to stop all that nonsense. So you want to transcend all these things. Transcend all of them. To arrive here. So, the divinity in existence is something, the appropriate word used for the divine in the Hindu scriptures is Brahman. The word Brahman is used. Brahman means that which is vast, that which is limitless, infinite, that which is infinite, without any boundaries. Without any boundaries. That's what Brahman is. And that Brahman is said to be homogeneous. It is one. Homogeneous. It is like a hologram. Like a hologram. At every point, a hologram is that at every point, it fully exists. Not that it doesn't, it is this. Not that it partially exists at one point, at another point it exists more. No. It equally exists at every point. So here also, Brahman, which is the word used 
for the divine ex uniformly exist everywhere in every atom in every molecule in every being in every in all the angels in all the humans in everything in the whole universe it uniformly exists therefore it exists within you too it exists within you too the divine exists because it uniformly and when it exists if it, if it exists within you too hmm, then you are it you are it you are the divine why your human state of existence or your human identity is a slight error <laughs> just a little error you have so this the error is what what is called that you have deviated somewhere you have got deviated you know where you got deviated where you got lost so a little deviation means you got diverted somewhere where did you get diverted come on where is your diversion where has your diversion taken place okay of course that's part of the diversion first of all diversion is has taken place with with respect to your body this body of yours hmm? that's the first diversion that's why you feel that if you have a human body you feel that i am a human being if you have a man's body you say i am a man If you have a woman's body, you say you are a woman, and if you tell a man that he is not a man, he gets very angry, <laughs> <laughs> really upset. But for women, you want to give them an adjective in front, then they are happy. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the first deviation is the body. Then the senses, then the mind. You are continuated, hmm? and the divine is homogeneous. Hmm? It has no parts. Remember this. Have you heard that expression? We are parts of God. Some people circulate this. Have you heard? Hmm? We are not parts of God. God has no parts, like motor car parts. He has no parts. God is homogeneous and one. So that statement is erroneous. We are not parts of God. We are God. Fully God. Fully God. Not partial. Fully. You see. And this divine, which is fully present everywhere, at every point, in every being. It some it does it it does not it permit three types of differences arising in it. There is nothing within it. Hmm? There are no nothing outside it. Nothing similar to it. Nothing outside other than it. And it has. It has no internal divisions. There is nothing outside. And if that is the case, then you also should make your mind partless, whole, and one. Isn't it? Because the divine is one, partless. <coughs> huh? It is not fragmented by thoughts. Isn't it? Your mind is fragmented at the present moment. Fragmented. Your consciousness, with which your mind is, your mind is associated with this consciousness of yours, is fragmented by thoughts. Isn't it? By feelings, by emotions. Hmm? All the fragmentation is taking place. So you must now give up all these fragmentations. No fragmentations in your consciousness. Uniform. Maintain a uniform awareness. Just a uniform awareness. Just that uniform awareness, in which there is no fragmentation. Hmm? 
n. So no fragmentations, no differentiations to arise in your consciousness. Now, when you are seeing this cloud, is not your perception? Has it has not your mind assumed the form of this cloud? Your awareness is your awareness is now limited, circumscribed by the form of this cloud. The next moment you see the flame there. Then at that time your awareness is circumscribed and limited by the perception, by the perception and the awareness of of the flame. So every time you see something, you see a tree, then your consciousness and your is or your is limited and localized by the awareness of the tree. The next moment it sees the sky. Then every time it perceives something, sees or perceives something, whether it is an external object or an internal image. Hmm? You find mental images also, isn't it? You can imagine a flower in your eyes, with your mind. So these are mental images and thoughts. So every time you have an image, a mental image or a mental thought, huh? at that particular moment your awareness has been and circumscribe by whatever by whatever you perceive whatever you see you see a flower it's limited by that flower your awareness and consciousness is limited by that then the next moment it sees the flame and then a mental image so whenever it sees this it is limited it is limited if per chance with your eyes closed, you have no thoughts and no images in your mind. What would be the state of affairs of your consciousness? Tell me. Tell me. Non awareness. Huh? Non awareness. Of course, non awareness. But <coughs> I want to connect up something. Limitless. Huh? Limitless. Limitless. That's right, it is limitless. Formerly it was limited by the perception of the flower, hmm? limited by the perception of the tree. Hmm? So now, with your eyes closed, you see now. Of course, you don't see anything physically with your eyes. There are no mental images, no mental thoughts, and you are totally quiet and silent there. So at that time, what has happened to your Consciousness or awareness? What has happened? What has taken place? Unlimited. Huh? Unlimited. Unlimited. See? Unlimited. Your consciousness is now unlimited. Your awareness is unlimited. Because nothing particular is there to limit it. What did we say the nature of the, of the divine is Brahman? So therefore what has happened now, has it your awareness and consciousness got, has it been synchronized <clears throat> with 
the state of existence of Brahman, the divine. Huh? Hasn't it synchronized? Hmm? So when it has not synchronized, then you are in the act of perceiving that Brahman, that divine. This synchronization has taken place. Hmm? This is what it is. So as you keep on maintaining this state over a period of time, over a period of time, as you keep on maintaining this and practicing this, then this synchronization hmm, will lead will lead you to the divine experience. Will lead you to the divine experience. When? You want to know when, isn't it? <laughs> no guarantees. No? No guarantees. Of course there is no guarantee. You know why there is no guarantee? Because, yes, because it is not in your hands. You know in whose hands your enlightenment is? Tell me, in whose hands? Perhaps. Yeah, it's right. It's in God's hands. Nobody else's hands. It's in God's hands. That is why, you know, I recited the Benedict verses. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Right? Now this is a typical Christian, uh, this thing. But I added one more word there. And the Word will make you God. The Word will make you God. And that, and that word spoken by God will make you God. Will make you God. Spoken by God. So God is your Guru. He has all along been your Guru. Why are you searching for humans? Mortal humans with their limitations. Hmm? Don't you have faith in God? Have you lost your faith in God? Huh? Of course, you have because out of ignorance. Out of ignorance, you may have got lost. Out of ignorance. But God is your guide and He is your good. Hmm? Final good. It is God who will make you get in mind. So, the synchronization takes place here. Hmm? So that is why we said to get into this unknowing state. Isn't it? This unknowing state. You're going to get into this unknowing state. Who can do it for you? Can anyone else do it? You have to get there. Hmm? You have to get, get there. And that unknowing state is the old, is the old. You have to enter. You have to enter. And close the doors. Huh? What are the doors? How many doors have you got? Too many. <laughs> yes, you have 11 doors. You have 11 doors which you have to close. The 10 cents doors plus the mind. Because the mind has to stop being a mind now. When will you stop using the mind? When you, when you realize the mind is useless. The mind can't take you to God. This mind of yours cannot reveal to you what God is. So you have got to let go of the mind. Let go of the mind. That is why we said get to the state of no mind. You know, the state of no mind.
So thus, this thus far is it clear? Thus far. Now, we said one more thing.